Okay, so Antonio, good old Antonio. Uh, he was not able to be on the call today because he's on, He's. Uh, I think he said it was traveling or he's on the move or something. But uh, tomorrow I'll be traveling, so I can't be on the call. I'm sorry. It's okay. It is okay. Anyways, let's, uh, let's take a look. I need to follow this Antonio as well. Um, Madrid, Spain. Environment artists, prop artists at 2K. And the list of uh, the, the type of content that's in here is kind of crazy. So we've got environments. We've got materials. We've got some AAA content. Some lyrics work. Some, uh, some environments. Fan art. This like these sculpts, the stylized stuff. There's some really strong characters for an environment artist. It's kind of crazy. So environment and props artist. Pyro, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, this is a, so when I look at this, I'm like, yo, this is, this is cool. I really like the, the way the edges are, are faceted on this, uh, this work. I'm actually already going to like it. It's only two images, which is totally fine. Presentation here is pretty solid. Um, you're working. You got me on the background. Nice. <laughs> nice. So this, this looks awesome. I think the only thing I could ask for is maybe like a second light to get some, like another color highlight in there somewhere. I think that would look really cool. Imagine like a warm under light or like a cold, like side light and a top warm light. Um, yeah. And then we just keep going through it. We've got some like fan art, some, uh, some death fan art. Super cool. The skill level of ZBrush is quite high, I would say. And then, dude, finally finished my last project. As you notice, I love World of Warcraft, and the, and his and his characters in Sylvanas is one of my favorite characters. Base mesh model in Maya, then ZBrush, final sculpt in T pose. Went back to Maya again, mapped her, and did a little rig whole lot of info here 35k dude the materials are like awesome it breaks down a little bit down here let me just click this and kind of zoom in here that stair is terrifying um <laughs> but like in here is i think where it starts to break down a little bit and it's just because it doesn't have the like the surface breakup and detail that you're seeing on this material like on the armor itself the bone bow looks awesome though like, look at that. That is super cool. Um, so, really impressive stuff. Let's see if we can't uh, get into the topic here. Um, there's some diorama things. This is a pretty good breakdown. There's a lot of images in here. Like, this sculpts could maybe be just this one or them next to each other uh oh, wow that goes so thin i love it i wouldn't have the confidence to uh, keep it thin like that um but yeah i don't think you need as many images as you have in here i mean this is five years ago so we're not going to look at this too long uh man this is the attention to detail is crazy Let's, uh, let's go through here. Let me check this out. UE4. Oh, man. It's so interesting. I see in your portfolio, you're doing really stylized things. And then all of a sudden, you go into like a semi-realistic direction. And then you're like, I'm on Battlefield. <laughs> um, it, really intriguing. Let me just uh, move over here. Yeah, it's very Tim Burton in those in the shape language, right? So let's let's check out this asset, dude. This is freaking awesome. It's a really intriguing portfolio. So one of the things I really like about this piece is the attention to material type and really defining those materials independent of each other. You can see that the metal versus the bone versus like the leather type material. And it's just, and there's enough geometry in order to sell the shape, but not too much. Man, look at that sculpt, dude. 
Yeah, look, it's surprisingly low poly. Like you could ship, you could ship that. That's like cinematic, uh, in-game cinematic resolution. A few spots maybe in the horns and like in the blade, maybe you could add just a little bit more. Super clean though. Um, that sculpt is like, man, that's sick. Uh, we got a military bag here. Military bag I did cur um, currently working on. It took me three days. Just kind of going through here. Procedural cobblestone. So this cobblestone looks a little... It You can tell that you're, you're learning uh, designer just by the way that the stone breaks up and how things scatter and how the cracks are or the fractures in the stone. But it, overall, it's pretty cool. It's also, it's a little strong on the, the displacement. And you look at the tileable, dude, this is like, when it gets kind of crazy like that looks pretty good you've got some nice depth going on in there oh this is cool too tileable uh materials for dwarf mountain nordic environment let's go that's super cool a little centered like maybe the mountain could be a little bit off to the side or like not as tall that way you can like Really enjoy the view of it. Yeah, Bray was saying in, in chat, uh, when you look at this one, you can see the the slope blur using Perlin noise. So it's it's really like, it's kind of like when you're modeling and you go from like a really basic, um, you can tell that the way it's been modeled, you can understand how it was built. Like you can count the edges and all that stuff. It's the same in Substance Designer. Until you get to a certain complexity level, you can't, tell the difference between like the the types of uh surfaces like it's all it's all it simplifies itself quickly to your to your eyes but this this is a this is a pretty cool scene i think the alpha between the grasses maybe oh get a little tired um the alpha between the grass blades is a little close so it, it mips out really quickly and becomes like a solid plane so you gotta watch out for those if if ever you need really dense grass what you should do is actually instead of making it denser in the texture you make it denser by just placing more it's usually the better better route finding a balance between those is uh uh important um yes let's keep going here so we've got this dwarf mountain uh inside this is really cool it's quite a interesting shape read on the wood grain oh man dude you should start with this shot i mean this shot's pretty cool though I, i'll agree with that the steps are a little shallow so they easily become like these really thin lines the steps had just a little bit more depth to them i think that would be good but the attention to detail the balance of like where props are at where the lighting is like this is genius to bring in some cold light like that and bring in the snow i i feel the wow inspiration and the god of war <laughs> inspirations going on here quite strong look at the snow coming in there you got a video of it too So it's God of War fan art. Oh man, resolution. Let's go. Man, it's really cool. Off the edge like this, you're gonna get a lot of movement in the trees. Just wind is just gonna be slamming those slamming those branches around. Oh man, it's so cool. The uh the transitions are very jarring, I'll just say just as a heads up. I know this is two years ago as well. Um but uh yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Man, this is a big scene. Yeah, your framing is really strong. Everything is like directional. So when you fade between those shots, like just like don't, I wouldn't fade between them, maybe blend between them and make sure the camera is always moving at the same speed. Really important for just like not throwing off the, the brain. Your albedo's pretty pretty good i think maybe a little light 
but I think it's fine. Your detail lighting, like, look, that's where all the information is for sure. And then you've got your, uh, you can see all the roughness differences and, and all that. Your ambient occlusion is quite interesting. I feel like uh, when when people do ambient occlusion, like there's there's no reason for there to be AO on this surface, right? There should be AO between the two here. So I don't think this is truly ambient occlusion. It might be a little bit of the screen space mixing with some other stuff. But like the wood grain, for example, I wouldn't even put AO in there. Because like... The AO should be from like the macro elements casting ambient occlusion, right? Let's see what else we got here. So we got this. Oh, yeah. It Yeah, it almost looks like curvature map to be a, a bit. Looks like material AO. It might be. Um, yeah, and then it's mixing with the screen space. Yeah, because this, you can see like because the AO is so detailed, and present in the material itself just think like what's happening is if we grab this oh man i wish i had let me see here let me grab this bring it into photoshop and then we'll go here we'll grab this so if if your <laughs> nice if your assets in shadow if your asset is in shadow Imagine that basically what's happening is your material is that much darker. I mean, it doesn't look like a lot, right? But if you have assets that are too dark and they're in shadow, it might be because you're you're going too crazy with your ambient occlusion. Basically, your ambient occlusion mips down and it becomes this value averaged in shadow. So all of your materials will become too dark. Um, oh, dude, nice. Man, this is great that you did this breakdown. Oh, look at all this work. Really cool. Look at the snow in there too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. Trim sheets, very good. Yeah, you're saving yourself a whole lot of time with those trim sheets. Uh, let's see here. I just want to get through some of these other, this is really nice. There's a lot of detail going on down here, which makes it a little hard to read, but, uh, oh yes. Love these. Yeah, you can see there was a moment there where you could see a path. If you could see a walkway, that would be really nice. This looks great. Man, what an intriguing way to build that building. Dude, look at those lanterns. You can see the light sources in them. Yo. Yo, if Melissa was here. That's awesome. So it's super nice attention to detail. Dang, this is this is maybe even better than the house. Like this could be its own post. You remove this, this could be its own post. You have this shot, you got this shot. That is that is awesome. A little bit of stretching on the, the tree here, it feels like. But, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, see, with this one, I'm, it feels like all we're missing is some depth understanding. Like, I don't know how close this is to this. I know it's over here, so there's some distance here. But, like, with how low the sun is, the shadows are just cutting everything, right? Dude, this is uh this is nice. Yeah, these look like they're just alpha cards that are being placed to get some separation. Super nice though. They have a color to them. They're not just uh gray, you know. Yeah, this is a really nice scene. And then you get into your battlefield stuff. Glad to be able to show some of my work I did on a team. My team did on Battlefield uh, 2042, contributing a 3D artist at Elite 3D. Ah, you're at Elite 3D. I hear very good things about that place. There's a lot of those people that are in the Empire as well. They're all very passionate, very good artists, and friendly. Dude, look at that. Yeah, the attention to detail is everything here. It's so funny, though. Like, you see how empty the space is? Welcome to multiplayer combat. <laughs> you know? you know, Nothing to trip on, nothing to skip on. 
you got this, you can kind of hide behind that. That's going to help you with a few bullets, but that's about it. Man, super cool. Looks like a concept. That's so crazy. Very nice stuff. And it has to be functional. That's the other thing that's really uh, important. Oh my god. Man, I need to see these maps in like in action. That's crazy. Oh, it's super cool, man. And then this one. Renewal. Cool logo design too. Really cool. I mean, it looks like, uh, and now you're at you're at two K. You're doing you're doing things, man. I don't have too much to to say on it. I think maybe you could remove these two, and the bag, the re and maybe this material. Everything else seems pretty consistently strong. Yeah, I'd say designer bricks. Everything else is stronger. You, I don't think you need the military bag. It just doesn't really add much. It's not poorly done or anything. And then these two, just don't stand up against the rest of your work so but man it's it's really cool really cool portfolio uh and now i'm like is 2k i guess i guess there's a 2k madrid but man that's a that's a sick portfolio uh antonio we're already we're only at 17 minutes for the the review and usually i sit for 30 um but we've kind of we've gone through all of your stuff and usually there's conversation and there's questions. So I'm just going to ask that you poke me with any questions you might have or show me anything that you're getting ready to work on. And that way you can get a little bit more value out of your, your review. But um, yeah, super cool. Really, really strong portfolio. It's like, whoa, crazy, crazy good. Um, all right. Thank you, Antonio.